So do you have any problems making machine guns? Well, uh, if that's so, just join me on this solo tutorial where I show you how to make the best machine guns. I mean, I'm also struggling a bit with them, but I think I got quite good at it and I will show you how I make my machine guns. Okay, well, so first of all, this is the sound that we are creating today. It is a total machine gun with some sub bass. Oh yeah, this is heavy. But how did I make this? Well, we have to hop into another project. Okay, well then, here we are. And as you can see, it, the machine gun consists of some layers. So let's just delete the kick for now. Um, I have here exactly five layers. And few are tonal, some are just some background elements. Some are for the transitions and some is just to get more this feeling of a, an actual gun. Okay, um, so which layers does it consist of? Uh, at first I have here a very heavy sub bass. Uh, this sounds like this. And what is important about that bass uh, is that you automate the pitch just like you automate all your machine guns with a similar shape. So this makes it way easier uh, for you to make machine guns because they, all the layers are sounding similar and they are fitting together and make the whole sound really full. Um, I just combined here with some noise, noise is always nice, and distorted it and put some compression on it, just a little bit for now and this works fine. And also on the LFO, try to change it to RAID because this makes it way easier if your machine gun is a bit off, is a bit offbeat. And if you want it like that, it's way easier to change it like this. Otherwise, you have to, uh, one half, one fourth. It's way easier and freer in that way. Okay, so uh, the second thing has a lot of effects. And let's just d disable them all for now. And let's see what we started with. I just used for a tonal layer a little saw wave. Sounds very weak. But this will be the main element for our gun. You will see how many, how much of an impact effects have on this. Um, I just used the saw wave with a bit of unison and did you did a bit, a very tiny bit, but also turned the randomness down to zero because we don't want that. Not too wide. It has to be punchy and really right through the middle. And it's also way better for the phasing. Um, when we are coming to the LFO shape, we see a very snappy shape and with a very low rate. Um, this is because I wanted some a bit of reverb afterwards and this makes it easier. Um, this is basically all there is to say about this LFO, oh, about this oscillator part. Um, just put the LFO on the course pitch again and you'll be fine. The guns will sound amazing. Then I used a lot of hybrid and dimension to make it wide and good in and put it good in the serial field. Then distortion to make it louder and crunchy. Also complements nice in the stereo field. Then a multiband compressor. It has to sound a bit crappy and this makes this multiband compressor. And then to finish it off, reverb. It makes it more crappy I would say. <laughs> but this is what we want. We want it a bit, not too harsh, a bit uh, like a s short swelling effect afterwards and if I stop you can already hear a bit of metallic uh, -ness in the sound and we want that metallicness is good for machine guns but to make the whole metallicness sound good we need some effects and I uh, used a lot of them for example reverb to make them better connect here especially if they hear some gaps for example here and here it's way better with, with reverb there you can also automate it, but I would use it on all layers and let's just leave it on triggered. Uh, then we can just disable this reverb for now because otherwise it sounds terrible without the other effects. I use a disperser. Um, yeah, a disperser is kind of important if you want to make tonal uh, like machine guns. You can do it without, um, but I prefer to do it with disperser. If you're using Ableton, on the other hand, you can just use a bunch of EQ freeze on top and then you're good to go. But it can also go wrong if you use too much and use this as your only layer. Um, you have to f still use layers. But whatever. Um, on, and if you don't have Ableton, 
but still want to make a sound that sounds a bit like a disperser. You can just use the frequency shifter from FL Studio 21, or you just search for an all-pass filter, because this is basically an all-pass filter, but with a bit of um, uh, extra special features, and put it on your tracks. Uh, I, use, I put it here on E, um, because it sounded best, even though this is in F, but I think it sounds better that way, so yeah, this is why I added it. There's not, uh, not a lot of reasons why. And we're getting a bit too laser feeling, and to get even better there, I just use an F, but like an octave down. Also 69, <laughs> nice number. And still not lasery enough, very high thing with a lot of pinch. And then I thought, okay, this is enough laser. Let's make it a bit more crunchy with an OTT. And it complements well. Then I distorted it even more with saturation preset from kilohertz distortion, but turned the dynamics all the way down. Because I was only searching for these harmonies in there. Then I just used the cleaning EQ, cut it everything below this. And to finish it off, a wave shaper. Also to bring in the lower end a bit, but not too much. And of course the reverb. Then I rooted it everything to a gun layers track, where I used the disperser again. Then the distortion again with a bit of saturation, but really, really low. Uh, then cleaning up EQ and again another wave shaper. And this is only for oh, this is for all the uh, layers that we are using, and I think this is the best way to make a good channel. So this is one layer on its own, but I added another layer. Uh, this one. Well, this layer is a um, bit different because I just reused a bass that I had. Uh, it sounds like this. Yeah, very strange, uh, very short and snappy bass. If it's a very good for color bass, um, but I thought, why not using it here? And I just distorted the hell out of it and used uh, a very strong wave shaper. Uh, put on the disperser and cued out the low end because I just wanted to add more crunch in the high end and not to boost the low end because um, the subway is already boosting enough of it. Um, yeah, this is basically how it works. Um, if you have a bass that works also perfectly as a gun, then you can just reuse it or you just make a bass with this kind of shape, with a shape that goes up first or down or goes like this, only down or is sharper like this. It doesn't really matter. Do whatever you think sounds best and you'll be fine. Okay, um, so now you would, should have three layers. It sounds good already, but we need a bit more. And this is why I added this very laser-like layer. I'm using the word laser a lot, but it is a laser gun. Okay, how did I make this? Well, this is also a bit of resampling that I did. Um, I used it from making this bass or better called this gun here. I have it there as a transient element, but really, really quiet only. So, um, yeah, this is why uh, you are not familiar with it. Um, to use that, um, you can, to create something like that, um, you can just grab your tonal layer, um, press it and record it in Edison. I can do it just live right now with Edison. So you so you grab your Edison, put on record, click, and there you have it. Also, if your computer is not that good and you can't really work with um, with uh, synthesizers and have to work with samples, this is a great way to get your samples uh, right out of the synths. So just grab this, make it short. 
okay it's sharp it's still sharp this is beautiful and then drag it out and you have it um, it's still very long so let's make it shorter trim it then put it on out mode output mode and then have it and you can pitch it up and cut and just mix it in a bit until it sounds good this is basically how I made uh, this sound here it's really just for transient and also gives it a nice lasery feeling then I have a machine gun that I used from an, from a sample pack that I have I think it's the um, mad void sample pack um, machine gun base 4 yeah this is a very percussion like machine gun and it's is used for cheer out but I th think it sounds better in dev step correct me if I'm wrong but I don't know this is also just a good layer not a good machine gun base on its own in my opinion you probably like it um, yeah, I also used a disperser on this, a little cleaning up, and a bit of reverb. Sounds already better. And yeah, this is the last layer that I used to make machine guns. Um, as you can see, we have now five layers over each other, and I think they're sounding quite nice. Uh, for mastering, if you want to master your samples, I have just used an ozone here because I'm lazy. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, mastering for machine guns is not too complex. You should already you should boost around here with a bell because um, machine guns usually don't have that much frequencies around here, but a lot in the low, lower frequency area. Um, but yeah, you should boost that and maybe reduce a bit the highs. Uh, imager, you know, keep the sub bass in mono. You can drive these other ones up. We need it in the stereo field because it's a tonal gun. And yeah, the rest is probably familiar to you. Uh, then you can just write out some ideas in your sub bass. For example, here with a bit of strange guns that I, gun patterns that I made. You can just put it in here and basically a nice track. So that's it with the tutorial, guys. I hope you liked it. Uh, make sure to give a subscribe and a like as well. And I hope you see you in the stream or maybe in the next video. Have a nice day and bye bye, my friends.